Hey everyone, I hope this is working. I hope you can all see me. I can see all you guys in the chat there, welcome. I hope uh, everyone is doing well on this Father's Day, Sunday. What is it, the 16th? So, thought I'd do a little bit of live streaming today. I actually only made uh, made up uh, my mind to do that just this morning, so I'm glad you could all turn up. I hope this is interesting. I'm gonna try and go through a bunch of different um, things on live stream I, I figure there's there's a lot of stuff that i do just as part of making these videos uh there's a tremendous amount of raw footage that i capture uh as we've been around the world and been to all these different places i've got terabytes and terabytes of it now and i spend a fair bit of time just trying to review stuff to um pick out the right bits and and uh you know look at the interesting parts and put that together into video and that's that's kind of my intent now with my doom I, I see chuck is over in the chat as well how you doing chuck good to see you um and he did a video recently on my doom and it it has kind of inspired me to take a look at my footage and it's funny i've got so much of it i remember reviewing this footage shortly after we went to egypt and i pretty much only watched it one time and it wasn't until recently that i went back and looked at it and uh it's i was like wow there is so much to see under this uh the mastaba and and the rest of my doom there's uh, precision boxes, there's some megalithic walls. It's a really interesting spot. Uh, so I thought, well, why not try and share the, the raw footage of all of that? By the way, just trying to set up my stream here, you guys let me know if the mu there's background music, if that's too loud, you don't like it, I'll turn it off. You know, feedback on this is appreciated because I'm, uh, I'm just trying to figure out if it's something that is worth doing. Um, and I also uh, thought it would be a good opportunity to review some of the uh, news articles. I've got a few things that are really interesting to look at. Also, maybe give some recommendations for websites and um, things that I've found just as part of my research. So I do try to maintain a playlist uh, of stuff that I'm watching on YouTube, which I put a lot of stuff into. But there's a whole bunch of other things that go around with it. This is just generally interesting. I mean, sometimes I tweet them out, but I can actually talk about them a little bit more on a live stream. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, let me... Make this a bit bigger. And I've also, I did one of these a while back when I looked at Corral. And let me see, uh, just read some chat. I am gonna, I'm gonna plan on interacting with the chat. So that's why I put the chat in my stream as well. So, you, you know, when on replays and people that watch this afterwards, cause I'll keep this up as a video, they'll be able to see the chat window up there. I had that feedback from the last uh, live stream. I tried to like people that are watching in full screen, you can't see the chat. So I put it into my, my video. Let's see. I recognize a bunch of names in here too. Thanks, everybody. I, uh, it is good to see you all here. This is, and this is the idea I, wanna, I wanted to do more in direction. Just it'd be a nice way to, to get feedback and uh, get some direction because I honestly, the crowdsourcing of information I, found, I find to be really quite inspirational. There's been so many times in videos where I've done something, I've been corrected, or I've just learned so much from people in comments that have, they know so much more about a lot of this stuff than I do, and they just put me on the right path. For example, the last video, the resonance video. I'd lost the name of the actual tomb that we were in and you know I remember we just go to so many and to be honest I'm very much focused on some of the technology aspects of it. I, I you hear so much of the hieroglyphs and the translations and the this and the that and the history of it and I'm not um, I don't put in the same amount of research into that stuff as guys like Chuck do. But you know in the comments oh you were in the tomb of uh, it's oom or oof or something and I looked it up and that's exactly right so it's just being able to get that information I find to be really valuable so. Joel, wow, super chat, <laughs> that works, thank you. Joel says, uh, for $10 says, congrats on passing 20K, lots of quality content and everyone and everyone enjoying the content, I sure am, I sure am. Thanks Joel, cheers, that's really nice of you and I certainly recognize you from a lot of the comments, I'm glad you're enjoying the stuff that I'm doing, I've got a lot more planned. I'm just gonna kick this off in the background actually. Uh, and I will mute the audio for parts of this just because driving sounds aren't that interesting. But part of the videos too, we capture a bunch of driving footage and you know, these cameras don't always figure out what's level um, when you're driving, but while I'm chatting, we'll, we'll look at that. But thank you, Joel, I, um, I, uh, I really appreciate that, mate. I'm glad you enjoy it. I've got a lot more planned. I've got a lot more footage of so many different sites that I just, I, I'd love to share really and, and get into and give them the justice they deserve. So. I don't publish that frequently, but I, I, there's a lot of time that goes into the stuff that I do, and I, I do try to do it well. So, Shmoo asked me, are you Aussie or Kiwi by any chance? Aussie, Australian, uh, although I've been living out of the country for 16 years now, so accent's a little muddled. Um, music's fine, level's good, thank you. Cheers for that. 
Hey, you should uh, probably move your face further to the middle. Currently the chat, all right, I can do that. It's easy, there we go. Face moved. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, actually you're right. And if it depends, if you are watching in full screen, I guess you're not looking at the chat window in, uh, in the actual window. I've actually, I'm grabbing it just from my other monitor. That's part of the reason I'm also liking the feedback because there's a lot of different wheels turning, I guess, to, to do all this live stream, live streaming. Mr. Sin, two euros, keep up the good work, man. Thank you very much. Cheers, I appreciate it. Um, you guys are you guys are too kind. Uh, I really, and some of you guys are comedians too. I got to tell you, ah, even there's a uh, someone in my family listening in. How about that? There he is. It's good to see you, Dad. Sticky V, seriously, man, I can't think enough. You work trouble. Thank you very much. Yeah, you guys say some very kind things, and I got to say too, like in the last couple of videos, a bunch of you are pretty comedians as well. Like I, I, I've had a good laugh at a lot of the stuff that gets said in some of these uh, in some of these comment sections. Uh, I got to say. And uh, I, I, I'm quite fine. I like people disagreeing with me. I just want, so as long as it's civil and good natured, man, go for it. I, I enjoy it. Reading some comments. Ben, thoughts on the copper theory? Well, there was copper. They put it in their glyphs, but I uh, am not sure of its effectiveness when it comes to, to cutting granite. So I'll say that. Um, yeah, it's garbage. It's, they're just trying to use the tools that they found in the archaeological record to explain um, everything you see because we don't have the tools to explain things like the boxes at the Serapium but because we have copper tools and we can't think outside of the box in terms of how capable ancient civilizations were they always have to be primitive relative to us they did it with copper tools and that's it right and it doesn't make any sense and Egypt again Egyptologists and those types of academics typically aren't uh, they're not engineers. Like it's not the same type of science. There, there's, I think there's, there's a lot of, and what the work they do is important. Definitely, we need to interpret what's left of us of those cultures, and there's all the language studies and the and the symbology of everything is super important. But when it comes to engineering, we should be talking to engineers. Um, at least that's my opinion. So, all right. I, some of these, mu by the way, I don't know what half this music. It's it is. Um, it's just CC by music because I don't want to get dinged by YouTube for anything. So there'll be some weird tracks in here, probably some ambient stuff, but uh, whatever. Historically speaking, is now a good time to visit Egypt in respect of access and safety. Bros and Utes with AKs. Yeah, so this is a good point. And while this footage is playing a little bit here, just so you can... Um, it's got a little bit, of, little bit to go before we get to the site. I, I haven't seen any of this in a while, so I'm watching it too. But in terms of safety in Egypt... Look, I, I, there's some bad stuff happen. It's happened recently, that's for sure. But and, you know, bad stuff happens everywhere in the world. But I, the way I look at it is kind of statistically, your chances of being hit by anything. You know, I mean, this is a like Bill Gates. They say Bill Gates red pilled everybody recently on Twitter. Go look up. He tweeted out the actual statistics in terms of what gets Google search attention, what gets uh, news article attention for different causes of death you know so it's obviously heart disease is the big one cancer's right up there big one then there's car accidents and accidental death and things like that's another big chunk and then that's sort of shown you know terrorism is like point less than 0.01 of a percent or something and then you know, all these other causes but then you look at what people search for and then what gets reported in the news and it's just yeah, terrorism is a huge chunk of it it's just I try not to let that stuff frighten me, basically. I, I, Egypt's ultimately, it's a friendly place. It's safe, I think. Uh, you know, if bad, if bad stuff can happen to you anywhere. And it's, you don't ever hope it does. You can take reasonable precaution to, to avoid it. But look, you're statistically in way, way more trouble every time you get in a car and drive around your neighborhood, every time you eat too much or whatever, right? So, yeah, I don't let that, uh, that stuff bother me. I go, and it's, it's fine. And they just, look, the... Um, the bros with AKs, that's just the nature of it. And you can actually can start to see the Maidoom period here. Uh, period. Maidoom pyramid, or whatever that structure is, because it is quite mysterious, although they say it was a uh, pyramid. And Chuck has done an excellent video on the history of this and a lot of the things that have been said over it. Also, I look at some of the architecture inside, and we'll be getting a much closer look at a lot of that stuff in this footage. Um, but to wrap that up, I think go to Egypt. It's actually found that it's quite valuable going there when there is uh, so few tourists uh, i've had some incredible experiences in the last couple trips that on empty sites i mean you'll see there's nobody else at this site when we go here not that this is that common to get to it is a little drive out of town um 
but you know, only one at Dashur, the only one in the Serapium. I had an hour in the Great Pyramid. It's uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's a good time to go and experience it. I mean, you have the I think Machu Picchu in South America has kind of taken that overflow of tourism, and Machu Picchu has been getting more and more crowded. It's always at capacity, basically, but it's, I mean, it's always still worth going. And in fact, I'm thinking about going back to South America next year. Uh, Watcher asked me, yes, are you planning a trip anytime soon, considering it? Oh, hey, Andrew, Ancient History, see, see you out there as well. And uh, I am considering going back to South America, but close out on the Egypt thing, I'd, I'd say go. And don't be worried about, I mean, that the, the guys with AKs, that's kind of a government requirement. They do that... Um, all the time, you will see guys with weapons and things running around, and that's that's the case in a lot of countries. It's the reality. I always thought the Philippines was was crazy. Like I always, thought, I spent a lot in my career. I spent a lot of. I lived in Singapore. I traveled through Asia extensively, and uh, I always found Philippines to be just the wild, wild west. Man, there's the guys. Not only you would have a guy with a shotgun and a, and a pistol on his hip, but not only that, he'd have ammunition, like bandoliers of ammo, like ready for action i'm like okay you, you got the pistol but you've got reloads like, I'm like okay i don't know what happens in in the philippines but i know bad stuff happens in the philippines too but uh yeah we'd always have high degrees of security they'd look under the car with mirrors and dogs and all that sort of stuff it's oh matt another super chat thank you matt says new to the channel but it's exciting and excited to have found it thanks for all the work you put in thank you very much and uh boom in your face for a dollar thank you very much that's a sweet sweet moustache you have there man in your uh in your little picture that's uh it's awesome <laughs> i wish i could grow one like that i can't sticky v any chance any chance of going on a couple of dives like graham hancock did actually uh, i'm sorry i can't i hey, ian gifford in there as well uh, i'm reading a few other comments but that the diving uh comment is a good one um Yes, actually, I think so. I've, I've actually did a lot of diving. Lived in Singapore and, and northern Australia before that, and I was diving in my late teens. I've done more than 300 dives. I love it. I actually, it's the one thing I really miss about where I live now, which is sort of inland northern California. Um, I wish I could do more diving, and Yonaguni and places like that have always fascinated me. And if ever there's a chance, yeah, I used to actually do filming underwater as well. I've I had some underwater camera gear back in the day. Like I'd have to buy the new gear now because I think the resolution would be like this these days. But um, Oliver Poiti, <laughs> four ninety nine. Keep it up, Benny. Thank you very much. I'll do my best. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Ian, um, Ian Gifford, dollar ninety nine. How's the tea they serve in Egypt? Hashtag shame on you. Yeah, that's uh, well done, Ian. That's um. Ian has been a long-time supporter of the channel and the work we did at Pukajay uh, before, before, before I started this. And uh, it's a funny story because this was on that trip where I drank some tea at Abu Si. It's actually in a clip, and I, I, when I make this video, I'll probably make the connection when I put this video together. But man, I I was green on this day. You can see it on my face. Actually, I was exhausted. I was so sick, so sick. And it, it's you just look. South America, Egypt, it's almost um, its almost a lock that there's going to be a day or two where you, you basically have food poisoning. And it's just not a comfortable time and it's just you feel horrible. And uh, this is one of those days. So I sort of suffered through this day and Luke was kind enough to be doing all the filming. I just sort of, it was all I could do to drag my sorry butt down through this mastaba and into the place inside because it's, um, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's quite a it's quite an adventure actually going to. I want to go back again and do it like where I'm a little more healthy because, um, yeah, I could yeah it was it was tough. <laughs> it was exhausting and yeah so don't drink the tea and that's a joke I'll get into. But on the site sometimes if you get into it with the groundskeepers, it's, there's guys that sort of live out there. They have little tents and they, they're almost like these. You'll see they're wearing their big robe thing and they're just the guys that shoo away tourists and people that come and ha harass. The site and then make sure that people have paid their money to get in funnily enough a lot of these sites are out in the desert you'll see guys just hooning around in jeeps I've, i saw some crazy four-wheelers in the in the jeep there's guys like like champion horse riding and, and like get these race horses out running around the dunes you have i've been to abu Sir and abu Ghraib and there's been families of little kids uh, playing on the site which is really cool i guess that's where they literally the houses that's the neighborhood they and yusuf grew up literally playing at Giza, you would go and for the afternoon with his kids go and play in the pyramids and all the catacombs. So they've been down into all the shafts and things and 
all these areas before they were put there, you know, all the, all the locked doors were put on everything. Can't imagine growing up at a place like that. Would have been, would have been interesting. Ben, does Yusuf A1 have a YouTube? So Yusuf, uh, does, does Yusuf have a YouTube channel or social media account? I think he does have a Facebook. But Yusuf, uh, you know, I've tried and tried to get him uh, online and I know a few people have. He just, he loves to show people the stuff and he's just focused on what he does over there. I know he, he knows he has a, quite a good following, but he just isn't, he's not interested in spending much time on a computer talking about it, I guess. He's so, uh, I kind of really respect that. He just loves showing people around. I've seen a bunch of different people with him um, on trips to Egypt. Obviously, I highly recommend him. Anyone ever wants to go. Shmoo says, Ben, I've been to Lebanon numerous times and you'll see a lot of people carrying guns for a lot of reason that does actually make me feel safer. Yeah, it's just kind of a normal thing. I bet, yeah, it's, um, it's all around the world. As soon as you spend a lot of time traveling in either sort of developing countries, it becomes pretty common. You just sort of go with the flow everywhere. And so I find too, people are people. There's friendly people everywhere. If you, you know... I, mean, I sort of do carry a little Australian flag, and sometimes that helps. Not, a, not not American, don't hate me too much, although that's a misplaced thing as well. They they love America. I mean, these a lot of these cultures love Americans. Um, what's the temp in the Great Pyramid? Cooler than outside, but still not always. You still sweat quite a bit. It is humid. Blitzy, busy Lizzy, forty eight pound ninety nine. Great show. Keep it up. Scotland thinks you rock. Thank you. <laughs> I think Scotland rocks. I'd love to get to Scotland one day. I've not been there. In fact. Well, I just interviewed one of your professors the other day. Um, well, at least he works there, right, I think? Martin um, Sweatman. More ziggurat than pyramid, right? Yeah, so perhaps I should probably even talk about what I'm looking at. So this is... Yeah, this is uh, my doom. And they say that this is all rubble. Chuck would know a lot more. I'll just back it up a touch. You, you saw it all. But that, that, that all of that rubble around the actual pyramid was the original structure, and maybe that's the internal structure. It's hard to say. Um, it's very mysterious, uh, that whole that whole place. In fact, and it's not far from Hawara, which was the other site we visited on this day. I actually have the Hawara here thing as well, and that's worth probably a, a look in another podcast. But yeah, it's, it's, it is kind of a mustab. It does look stacked, but you can see this is all still masonry, and, and it does have an angle to it, so who knows? Um, although these blocks on the outside look finished, I think, if anything, it's... Maybe there was a central core structure that then had been built over later and then it then it fell down and somebody else then built that thing. Uh, I think you look at multiple kind of developments because now this stuff is really interesting to me because this is Mastaba, I think it's 17, they call. Definitely tombs. And these were little tombs. And it, it's all adobe and small brick construction on top. But what's super interesting about this is that there's a megalithic structure underneath it. And it, it's incredible undeniably megalithic it's and and there's a precision granite box not as big as the boxes in the Serapium. and we'll talk about that a bit more when we see it but uh and then this was then built on top of it in a much more primitive fashion and used as tombs and you've got to ask yourself why i mean that you, you clearly somebody had the capability to do megalithic work but then it's it seems very almost obvious to me that this was put on top of that structure and because it was they found it and they responded you know, respected it and it was as awe-inspiring as it is to us today. Just seems logical to me that that, that gets reused in over a 5,000 year period. I mean, that culture's going to adopt that stuff and own it. And... Reading some comments. Thank you for posting. Yeah, not no row of stairs. It's not as, yeah, not really a cigarette. Almost a stack mustard, but it's not really stack mustard or either the step pyramids. You're feeling more technical and spiritual. I think there's a lot of technology. I think it, it, it seems to go... There's symbology in a lot of these places too, but to, in my mind at least, it, my sus suspicion is there was some functional purpose to a lot of this stuff. Oh, good question. What made me get into this? Well, I have lifelong interest in history. My mother was a history teacher, so I kind of inevitably dealt with some of that. But then I, you know, I almost went that direction at university, went another way, and then later on... Always kept an interest in it. Went to Rome. Actually, there's a, I, got, I, I do want to cover Rome. I, I've got some good images from Rome. And, and But in Australia, we don't have an ultra ancient culture to speak of. No megalithic builder culture anyway. Obviously, we have a very deep and long culture. And there's an, an article I'll get to later uh, that talks about that. But um, it's not... Uh, 
it's no it's not like there's other cities to explore you know it's it's all just relatively last couple of hundred years so going to europe and rome and for the first time in my early 20s was a revelation and then graham hancock's book came out and he just you know interest intensifies and interested in him and then i traveled with him for two weeks i think it was 2013 and after that i was it was i was done like that was then it was like that slowly became my sole focus spent all my time doing that then always just traveling for that and became crazy must have been a treat to go on a trip with brian forrest and graham hancock yes yeah that really was that was an interesting trip i got a lot of stories from that trip uh let me just scroll up here and this is interesting too. You can see like this is the state of places in Egypt. They, they, we're kind of like, well, you know, give us a hand. You clean out some of the trash out of the um, ancient megalithic site, please. <laughs> my wick was ultimately lit by the Graham Hancock Randall Carlson JRE. You know what? That's a good point because my uh, wick was lit by the first Graham Hancock appearance on the J on JRE. Although probably before that, I'd read his fingerprints and I was interested in really interested in the work Graham was doing. But he lit he kind of lit the wick in another direction, which I had no idea about his work into consciousness. So that was a whole other thing that I, you know, that, that was a fun journey to go on. And then there's obviously a connection with some of this stuff, particularly South America. You go down there and it's the ceremonies and all the shaman that you tend to work with. I mean, I've had some really interesting experiences there as well. Uh, ben, move your mouse. Okay. Mouse moved, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good feedback. Rome has some impressive foundations. There's tons of interesting things in Ant Antarctica. I agree. I'd love to get there one day. That's on the wish list. Although, you know, it's a serious wish list because it costs a lot of money. So this is what I'm talking about. You can see the construction of the Mastaba that's on top and it's adobe mud brick. And then this tunnel looks to me, this is not, I mean, it's just mortared foundation and and and, and line, almost like bedrock here uh, so it's really an interesting method to get into this site because in the pyramid has some interesting sort of similarities as well these guys are doing a great job cleaning it up kind of give him some cash for helping out oh. back up back up <laughs> let's see the Romans also knew how to protect their sites from earthquake. Very interesting, yes. And they had some interesting... I mean, you get into Baalbek, because that's supposedly a Roman site as well, and I think they are... Uh, Malta too, right? There's a lot of really interesting, possibly older megalithic routes to a lot of those places, and there's some distinction between the architecture. I do like the argument about Baalbek being that it's a pedestal on a pedestal, given the Romans always built a pedestal then put their monuments on it, but... They did that at Baalbek, but the pedestal sitting on an even bigger pedestal that includes the trilophon. So it's kind of like, mm, this would be the only time the Romans ever built a pedestal on a pedestal. So yeah, it's, this is the access to get into the Mastaba. And you're not quite crawling just yet. There's periods in here where you do have to crawl. And I will actually kill the music and turn this up. Now, it's hard to, I'll say this, it's hard to hear. And if the noise is too too much, let me know in the chat. But it's hard to hear, and I'll, I love these cameras, but man, uh, the first few software releases there had horrible, horrible sound. I mean, it just all you're hearing is the gimbal motors in the cameras and the fan, and and it doesn't seem to pick up any noise at, very well at all. Like the worst cell phone camera has a better audio. And most of the time when we would record, it would be this plus I'd bring some decent, actually this shotgun mic I'm using now, uh, some decent um, recording gear to try and then, you know, you sync it up later and, and do that. But it, it's such a pain. I, I wish these things had better sound, but the, the one I use now has much better sound. Actually, I have a dedicated mic for it as well. But yeah, so you, it's essentially what looks like, a, almost like a bedrock tunnel that's just under this mastaba that's been built on top of it. And this is, it's its almost like a robber entrance, it feels like. But it digs, it goes down through the bedrock and to another, another little tunnel here. No, not light. And Luke's driving, I'm behind him. You need light? As he's trying to squeeze his way in there. And this is all hands and knees crawling through the chip packets. And <laughs> it's a fun experience. But all of a sudden, right? Check this out. Like, all of a sudden, through the blocks emerges, you come into this mass, this incredible megalithic chamber. And 
I get a good look at some of the walls in here, there's literally the around the corner kind of joinery of the typical megalithic wall, very similar to the architecture you'd see in the Sphinx Temple and that well known as Little Mo taking a selfie. He was one of our guides on, on the day. He's a, uh, he was working with um, Yusuf and Kuril. Yusuf wasn't with us on this day. We had wow. Big Mo and Little Mo, Muhammad, Muhammad, and um, that's Little Mo. He's a nice guy. He, he was, and it's, we were a little hard on him sometimes because he was kind of fresh out of the orthodox school of thinking and was being shown the ropes somewhat by, by Yusuf and Muhammad and there's a lot of time spent sort of going back and forth on different times. He's good though. He's very, I, I like the, the debate that there's a lot of contradictions here where you can point out and go, huh, huh? <laughs> and stonework and copper chisels, bro. So anyway, have a look at the wall here. And it actually, well, here's me hauling my food poison butt through the, the, the hole. Your thoughts to acoustic levitation. Now, I'll get into some of the acoustics in my resonance video. Let me just, I'll move my mouse again. So, and then you go in and there's clearly been some work been knocked around here, but there happens to be a precision granite box in this alcove, in this chamber underneath this mastaba and a bunch of bats and, and sort of nice big ceiling blocks too. It's hard to tell exactly what is a block in here. It's almost as if this has all been either plastered over or cemented over, but if, if nothing else, if that's not the case, and I think it might not be this, this block up there, giant, giant piece of stone that's been put into, I think obviously the, the roof was manufactured. And then here you can see some of the joinery, which is just pretty typical kind of perfect, perfect megalithic work with the little extra angles, no sort of, no, uh, no set patterns in form worked brick. Some of the blocks on the floor had some interesting machining marks. Let me just check this stream health. Looks like you guys are all still there. Yeah. So the blocks on the floor, and I think this is, I'm not even sure. I see me, it's almost like quarrying marks as if somebody's drilled into them to then blow them apart. But later on, who knows what time it was. So here's another, this is a nice granite box. This is, uh, looks like rose granite. Not as big as the Serapeum boxes, but you'll see as we look around the inside here, it does have the same characteristics. You can almost see the crystal, the quartz shining in it, but perfect kind of... I, I'm not measured this box, but it looks like very precise, flat surfaces with those, the same sort of extremely challenging inner radius turns. Again, why do you go to so much effort for a ceremonial box? And actually, so what's interesting about this box is they did find a body in it. Uh, let me back it up a, bit, a little minute here. Um, they did find a body in this and it doesn't appear to me to be the same sort of mass of like the Serapeum boxes where you're talking about a 30 ton or 20 ton lid that's so difficult to push across this box you could move the lid with enough effort and enough people down here I don't think it's quite that heavy well super heavy I'm sure but doable so maybe they put somebody in here but the body they found in this box wasn't a mummy from my understanding it did have its parts all wrapped up but not not a traditional mummy but very interesting. And also you'll note that way, way too big to be removed via the tunnel that we came in on. Yeah? Because, I mean, I don't think that... I, I don't know if there's an, an original access to this megalithic structure before that tunnel. There must have been. I, I can't imagine this... I mean, well, maybe. Maybe maybe that's a... Well, it was a tomb. We sealed it up. We, no, we never got back into it, but... It doesn't seem like it. And actually, that another possibility is it's been that it's been reused that way at some point. The Egyptians did make boxes. I think there are other boxes that don't display the same characteristic, and they certainly move some of that stuff around. So, look, I, I don't know, but I do know that it has to be contemporary with this chamber, at the very least, because you ain't you ain't getting that box in through the passageway. It probably had to be lowered in when these ceiling blocks were put in. And again, these are pretty big. Lumps of stone in the ceiling. Yeah. 
And that's a big block above the uh, the doorway there too. Am I... The chat's still live? Let me... Um... I'm wondering if my copy of the chat is still live. You guys tell me. <laughs> We've been doing toning a little bit. Let me just go to my channel and... Just move that out the way and check this out. Just make sure that because it looks like my chat has either stopped or stuck, or you guys aren't typing anymore. Let's have a look. Huh? Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I can see you guys are in the chat over there, but not here. Maybe if I do a refresh of this, <laughs> if this doesn't kill the stream, how do I... Test. It says yes to trust me. Test. Yeah, I'm not seeing any, any of these extra... I can see it over in the actual window, my stream window. Maybe I'll just do this. Does that work? No, that doesn't work. Let me just reload this page. I'm sorry. This is all fun for me. Alright. Okay. Now see I've done it again. I just I think it's the scrolling that's the issue. I don't know. You skipped a lot. Yeah, I did. I will pause that and figure that out. Let me just back this up a little bit. Sorry about that. Small technical difficulty with YouTube's webpage freezing. Let's see. Wow. Okay, I did. Thanks for moving the mouse. So let me just spend a minute to address some comments here. We'll get back to that video in a second. And I'll put my silly music on. Just got back from Egypt safe, but get ready for no good deed, deed unnoticed. Everyone wants their palms greased, especially by all the tourist sites. Yeah, that is kind of part of this. That's part of the experience in Egypt, uh, Oliver. Yeah, it's that it, Bakshish is the way of life, and it helps to do a little bit of it. It, it doesn't hurt. And some of it's very cheap too. Like you can, I, I you it's you always end up having a good experience to get some local help. But they're definitely some of them real pushy. I mean, that's the other thing, right? The, the vendors are. They're a pushy. They can be. Um, yeah, I call it the resting bitch face, right? You walk around and just scowl at people. And I'm usually, that works for me. I just, you know, no, I don't want to buy your t-shirt. Thank you today. They ever make you feel claustrophobic? I don't really suffer from claustrophobia. So no, I, I'll squeeze myself into anything I can if I'm um, going through these tunnels um, and these chambers. I Actually, we'll get into that because I did watch a video of a Russian channel, I added it to my playlist of stuff that I'm watching and these guys uh, went into the Bent Pyramid and I had not been in there and, and man, that place goes for miles. It's and it's just so much to explore and it was such a good good video and I think you can put on the subtitles in English because otherwise it's all in Russian but just the, the first person perspective of crawling through all the all that area in the Bent Pyramid, ah, that's, that's spooky but I, I would love to do it. What do you suspect this was for? I have no idea. I really don't. I just, I don't, I'm not sure originally that it was purely symbolic. For me, so many underground sites, so many granite sarco sarcophagus, granite boxes, precision made granite boxes, Zaywet El Aran, um, you know, the, the Abu Rawash, all these other structures. Chuck, Chuck looks into those a lot too. I think there was clearly a functional purpose to all of these things at some point. That all eroded. I think those, the original parts of all that is what the ancient Egyptians inherited, worked on, used, rebuilt, uh, renovated, uh, and then incorporated into their culture in a great deal. And that's, you know, we just don't have any more remnants of, of, of that culture that came before other than some of this architecture. So we kind of bundle it all up in the one package. But it's so many contradictions in that story. I think there must have been a functional purpose to it. I, 
I, I mean, I think that that culture also though made the statues, some of the precision statues. So there was clearly a lot of symbolic and and spiritual kind of stuff going on. But it, and it melds right into the ancient Egyptians. It's a point that Eusus makes. The ancient ancient Egyptians modeled themselves after those. If you if you accept the premise that perhaps some of these statues are older than the ancient Egyptian culture, then clearly the ancient Egyptian culture modeled themselves after them. I mean, they 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 kept going they kept doing what those people did that's just, i think that's one of the reasons that explains why it's the old kingdom pyramids allegedly anyway the oldest pyramids are the most precise i mean and and the the old kingdom always is the 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 one period that has all of the, the most amazing work it's you know it's almost as if 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 you say that egypt did it then they did it straight out of the stone age and declined for five thousand years and it just doesn't make any sense to me i think it's something that they they inherited a lot from those people it's one of the reasons that their civilization rose the way that it did you you inherit a lot i mean it's a you're big kickstart you know it's it's you get a lot of concepts you fully formed mythology by the look of it i mean they were connected to that culture they talk about it zeptepi the gods the followers of horus after the times of zeptepi these the followers of horus were like this you could equivalents like viracocha you know these magical high technology everything they talk about is magical and their abilities were, were mystical and magical but it just pretty much describes technology your food poisoned body. Uh, <laughs> let me skip down to here and uncharted everything precise is made for some form, some form of function. I think so as well. Okay, I'm gonna keep this video going because I think I'm up to date on the chat. I'm sorry if I don't. Did you know? Did you guys know Zayuas first came up with the idea of putting a gift shop before the main attraction? <laughs> Quite the innovator that guy is. Yeah, yeah Zahi. I've met Zahi. He's he's a politician. Are you aware of any such granite boxes found in the Americas? No, I'm not, but wouldn't that be something? Um, I am not aware of precision granite work uh, in the Americas, no. I think there's... Uh, the massive mound works, yeah, and some incredibly large scale and scope of stuff, but I don't believe... There's me taking a little rest. There's Luke. Uh, I don't believe that there's any precision work. I might be wrong. I, I haven't... On, the Americas is a topic that I really want to get into. I have... Graham's book back here as well, and Chuck knows an awful lot about it. I actually want to travel to a few of these sites and do some filming. So. Anders Ericsson. Thank you, Anders. Cheers. Good on you. G'day, mate. The real, the real Jackson. Hey, Brian. Brian Forrester, everybody. Welcome. Hey, Brian. Great to see you. I'm taking a leaf out of your book and streaming a little bit. I love some of Brian's streams. They're uh, fantastic. Uh, particularly when in places like Peru where you... I mean, Cusco, you stand on top of the hill and, you know, 4G connection on a smartphone, might as well stream. And there's so... I mean, there's all these sites dotted around the top of Cusco, but the, everything in between them is full of this stuff as well, the megalithic sites. It's just... I can't imagine it. I couldn't imagine a better place to stream from. Brian's been doing a lot of that. I know he's on a tour right now. It's great to see you, Brian. Dan White, do you perceive any association between underground sites and the unique King Valley, Kings Valley 5 that Kent Weeks reopened? I have to look into that. I'm not sure. If you're talking about a Valley of the Kings, another tomb, uh, I definitely, if you're talking about the, the Valley of the Kings, then yes. Uh, Brian actually has a, an incredible video looking into and now they're letting people film in these in the Valley of the Kings. It's great because... And I, I got my phone taken. I'd like grab a guy and take my phone back off him because he caught me trying to sneak a couple cell phone camera pictures in the Valley of the Kings. But now you can film. And Brian has an incredible uh, video of this tomb. It's just like passageways that rival the Serapium, but square like this. And giant granite box in these two. Insane. I think all of those were megalithic constructions that were repurposed and definitely repurposed by the ancient Egyptians because what do they do when they get into them? cover the walls in plaster and, and, and write hieroglyphs over everything. It's one of the major points about the pyramid. That's why I don't think they were getting into the pyramid because if they were, I'm fairly certain the walls would have been plastered and just covered in hieroglyphs. Let's see. The audio quality is sounding better these days, Ben. Cheers. <laughs> Brian is the only one makes a difference between dynastic and pre-dynastic, yes. You simply pay a fee, yeah. <laughs> Great, yeah. Glad to see you guys. 
chatting. I know he, Brian's normally behind the camera. It's hard to keep up with chat. I've got three screens going here just to try and manage all of this nonsense I have uh, happening in my little studio. I posted a picture of my room here on my community page as well. This is Little Mo. I can't imagine how people do this in a mobile environment or try to take this on the road. It's, it would be rough. See, so yeah, it's very uniform ceiling. Very uniform megalithic work. Pretty, pretty, very, very Egyptian um, megalithic work. And there's a big difference between this. This is one, I, I, the more I was thinking back to actually something Brian said in one of our interviews about how there's no straight lines in, in Peru. Um, I'll show you that picture I took of Luke later. Uh, you know, it, uh, these are all very straight lines in Peru, even the Corricanche, if you look down the side of it. In fact, the, the, my, my footage of the Corricanche, I'd love to, I, I, I want to do this sort of a live stream review of a few of those sites as well. Uh, but no straight lines, you know? Like, it's just w incredible detail. Like, it's just mind-blowing to me how, how they can put those walls together. I mean, straight, these are impressive as well, but the ununiformity, like the, the non-uniform nature of the walls in Peru is what is just a mind-boggling puzzle. Just ancient architects is missing. Well, it's probably, uh, I'm not sure what time of day it is for Matt, but it probably is pretty late. Brian, did I go into the Osiris shaft? Brian, I've never been in the Osiris shaft. I have to thank you for the first real good look I had at it on your video. I was hugely I just watched it a few times, actually. I haven't been there yet. I would like to. I know Luke went in it on his last um, trip. But I, like Egypt's, a, I do want to put together a trip to hit places like the Osiris shaft and, and see if we can get enough people to get permission to do something like underneath the step pyramid. Because apparently that's, they're opening that up. Or at least if, you know, through the right level of negotiation, then we could get some people down there. And, I th and it's an ex probably very expensive permission, so it would be something that we need to split as a group. But that's the kind of thing that I'd be super interested in getting a few people together to, to want to do, is to go and see a few of these places and, pa and you know, get it in and make sure that we get the right sets of permissions to Bent Pyramid, Step Pyramid, Osiris Shaft, maybe even if, you know, you'd, you'd throw in on a, on a tour, obviously the, a, a couple hours inside the Great Pyramid and then open that up so people can get down to the subterranean chamber. I want to go back down there again. Get on it, lol. <laughs> Thanks. Was I the guy that showed a picture of the melted staircase at the Temple of Hathor and Dendera? No. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Brian think no, Brian doesn't think UFOs did it all at Absurdium. I know he's been on Ancient Aliens, but that's he's not. Uh, no, that's you, you can't. A lot of people go on that show without buying into the premise. It's and I think Ancient Aliens is an interesting show. It does a lot for to to, to sort of publicise a lot of the mysteries, but they definitely have a premise that they're working with that I'm not sure is always one hundred percent one hundred percent helpful to people that are trying to take an open minded look at. Um, at these things, you know, just with op with a mind open to all possibilities, and they, they, I mean, they're it's fine, it's TV, right? It's but it's and it's good exposure for a lot of stuff. But yeah, it's a you got to kind of Andy nine one one SEK fifty. I'm not even sure what that is, but thank you very much, Andy. I appreciate that. Some traveling money. Cheers, man. Good on you. I, I, that's exactly what I intend to use my uh, support for. Is is exactly that to to do more of this and to have and to be able to share more of this and put more time into sharing it. There's a local guy back into the daylight. Yeah, and uh, actually, if you listen to Luke here, this is this is pretty cool. Uncharted X. How did your experience of visiting all these sites put your current world and lifestyle? Good question. Let me get to that in a minute. That's actually a good question um, because I think that's an Im important distinction. When traveling and exposure to cultures outside of your own, not only that, but, but ancient cultures really sort of can clarify what becomes important in life, I think, and what you should be spending time on and what you find important. So for me, it, it helped me to discard a lot of stuff and, you know, my convictions are my convictions and 
they, they've come to me after a lot of thought and research and I you know I, so I haven't had TV for 15 years I don't spend my time in a lot of popular culture at all the stuff that I think is important I don't think is something that most people are going to agree with and how but how I spend my time it means something to me and ultimately that's all that matters as long as you're doing something that's you find purpose you know if you find purpose and meaning in what you're doing then that's whatever that is you know that, that, then that's what's important i think as long as you find purpose and personal growth through this little journey we call life because we're only here for a little bit um that's it you know don't hurt other people along the way and that, that's that's the ticket <laughs> you know <laughs> that that's it but but uh, it, for me that my perspective was gelled by these travels and seeing how people lived i mean i'm very thankful for how i live now how and and I think we the, the the fact that people complain about airplane travel and stuff like that it's just man running water flushing toilets we live like kings we live like kings that have never lived before that like you got to the, the untold billions of people that have passed before us you know none of almost none of them live like we have the chance to live today and it's it almost feels like something that gets squandered sometimes but I try I try not to and I try to remain sort of grounded when it comes to all that stuff so. I don't, I don't sweat a lot of the details. I am... Da, Brian, yeah, on about ancient aliens, I know. I think it's a great... I think, you know, ultimately does more more help than harm because there are people like, what the hell, Nazca lines, all these things, but it's tough to then sort of separate the some of the, 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 the nature of why it's on television, the, the, the sensationalism, I guess. Nancy, yeah, no, no chemtrails up here. Let's see. Okay, uh, and I'll finish this. This is actually cool. So, you can hear Luke. I mean, I think he says it's awesome, fabulous. SEK Swedish Kronos, thank you, and thank you for uh, thank you for the traveling money. That's exactly what I use it for. I appreciate that a great deal. And as you can see, me <laughs> very uh, illy coming out. So glad I put on clean trousers this morning. <laughs> Me too, I think I said. <laughs> yeah, you start out with clean clothes in places like this and yeah. Oh. That was fabulous. That's my crutch. Bad habit. I try to do one a day. Yeah. Well you did the hard one. Quantum physics and pre-dynastic Egyptians yeah. may be a realistic prospect, considering the mathematics that uh, we know they knew. Indeed, I mean that's and this is this is the point that I, I like to make with uh, I was trying to make with Martin Sweatman as well, is because it, I mean the fact that you have what right. seems to be a pretty clear sign that they were observing cycles like the precession of the equinox. That that's not easy, and, and it takes sophisticated. Um, organization takes civilization you have to have guilds right you got to, people keeping track of this stuff it's not just one one guy figures it out when the you know the star moves 72 degrees in oh sorry one one degree in 72 years it's it takes all these other things and maps and the projections that they use on these ancient maps that the piri rays map that all is very sophisticated mathematics alan wilbur one dollar thank you very much alan cheers Megalith, dome, megalith under dome of rock weighs over 800 tons. Yeah. How much do you have to pay them to go into these sites? Depends on the site, depends on the requirements for security, depends on the permission. Everything's a little different. And if you want to do it, you can contact Yusuf and you can, his company is uh, the Ancient School of Chemitology, I believe is the name, and you can get into them, but they'll work with you to figure out what the cost is for a day at these places we i mean you can do the group tours with people they're also they're awesome but man if you want to go and hire these guys and uh just do it day by day that's what uh luke and i were doing on this trip we had like five or six days and we were just let's let's do this 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 and this if we can like sweet and they you know work out some numbers and get it done so yeah this is all the rubble field that is apparently all material from the, the original structure or original the outer structure whenever that was put on so 
Takes more takes time more than anything. Yeah. Is there an exterior stone foundation under that sand? Well, I believe so. The bottom I believe and actually wait till we go into the uh, the inside because I think it goes down through the pyramid and into bedrock I think into bedrock. I think it does drill down a bit a little bit lower than it does actually for sure, a little bit lower than the actual baseline. So I'm pretty sure there's a subterranean chamber down there but whether I think it may have also been built so I've got to imagine there's a limestone limestone bedrock underneath the sand here and this is also very near uh, Hawara it's not far away and there's obviously the legends of the Hawara labyrinth and that's all limestone bedrock tunneling there's some interesting granite stuff laying around here you do tend to like a lot of these sites are so quarried but you, you'll see like sites like this also, you see it at Saqqara, but little, like you have little quartzite or white calcite blocks that have the channels in them, which I think were just all over the place and all been removed. Or you have little chunks of granite that are indicators of, you know, granite works that have all been removed over the years. It's really hard to imagine what this was. Traces of Type 1 civilization. Yeah, I, I, this is the Type 1, 2, 3. Did you get images of the black slabs around the pyramids, Ben? Yes, I do. I have uh, plenty of video and images of all those, uh, the, the basalt slabs around the Great Pyramid. CFAPS, when there will be a live dialogue with all of you? <laughs> I'd like to. I, I, we'll probably do a live one sooner or later. And I've actually talked to Matt about that, um, Ancient Architects channel. He, he, it's a possibility. We'll see. Sounds like there'd be some interest. That'd be fun, wouldn't it? I think it'd be fun. Hutchinson effect. In the past, they've used sounds to move and bend stone and other objects. I'm not sure specifically what that is, but there's definitely like I'm doing a I'm researching a video on resonance, and it's an I mean Chris Dunn's book really deals with the resonance topic, and his whole theory is based around it. I'm trying to take a, a an open mind look at it. Obviously, I've experienced my I, I it just it's a phenomenal experience to have that resonance, but I mean, if that's all it is, that's it's hard to say. It's anything. It means much more than that. But his theory puts it into some context, and I'm trying to do uh, look at that. And there's also been some really interesting accounts throughout the years of, you know, sound and 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 um, harmonic uh, tools and techniques used to move stones. There's a Tibetan account that I'll take a look at. I know uh, Ancient Architects Channel has taken a look at some of that stuff as well in the past, but. Um, yeah, I mean, and we do literally do sonic levitation today. You can build your own acoustic levitator. I mean, there's a 3D, if you have a 3D printer, you can make one. Um, and this used to be science fiction, but now we're, 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 do, we're doing actual sonic and acoustic levitation now. So for sure, I think uh, more science, more science will help it out. How about engineering with heat through the use of glass? We have talked about doing it, yeah. Super concrete, the, the geopolymer theory is definitely uh, one that's worth looking at. I know uh, I have, I'm working on some stuff in South America. I'm going to try and get into that topic specifically around Puma Punku, Tiwanaku, which is another good video for this, this type of treatment because you can just walk around Puma Punku and Tiwanaku for, a, I mean, I've been there for four days filming and I don't think I've seen enough of that site yet. So. Do you have any info on the blocks that dropped before the king's chamber? We can talk about about that for sure. There's there's what supposedly were in those in the acid access passageway. Well, I know there was another block that was in the in the actual king's chamber that was removed. So now we're walking around to the front of the main structure, and we'll go inside. How long have we been going here? Can't even tell. doesn't tell me. It doesn't tell me? No. Okay. It's a nice windy day. As <laughs> usual, the microphone picks up the wind and the machine noise rather than anyone talking or anything anybody's saying. So, port colour slabs. Oh. Yeah. Maybe move 
this up a bit. There we go. Let's another look at the Mastaba. Yeah. One hour, thank you. Yeah, I think I'll probably go uh, hour and a half. We'll get this video done. I've got a couple other things that I think would be interesting to talk through. Just imagine what today's society would be able to do without getting distracted by the internet. It's just mind blowing. That's a the internet's an interesting topic. It cuts both ways for me. It's I think it's an incredible tool that's changed our ability to uh, learn and to self educate and, and there are just so many good examples of the 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 rewards of that and I mean so many people learn so much because of the internet. But it's also an amazing tool just so you can yeah, no, I, I think this is just like a narrow waste your entire life. It's incredibly distracting, right? It, it is, and it's just this unending feed of information and the way it gets manipulated into how we zombify ourselves with cell phones and are attached to applications and constantly interacting with things. I mean, the, the design that's gone into those serotonin <laughs> response mechanisms and all these apps and... likes as a currency yeah it's a it's like a drug I mean it really is I think it's you got to use it respectfully so into the main structure at my doom this is amazing I love this footage and it's had the stairs added to it so this was once a regular sort of pyramid tunnel sort of shape but the interesting thing is it starts off through masonry like no good masonry and then you can tell like it just it almost turns into much more crude construction so it starts off really precise and then gets past those outer layers and it's like and I, I believe this does go down in fact I'll look at it in a minute zombify me please uh, it's not a criticism on people it's, you know I, you do see people that just attach to the hip to the thing and it's fine it, people going to do what they're going to do with it but yeah it's, I just look at it like the internet's great but man you can uh, you can distract yourself endlessly on there if you want to, and it's an easy life to do. I, we get rewarded for doing that. Everything pushes us towards that. All of advertising, all of popular culture, celebrity worship, all these things. I mean, it's just it's. Uh, I mean, you can really you can get deeply involved in that. I'm just not sure that it, it if that becomes a passion. I'm not sure ultimately if you get much reward from that at the end, just by engaging in all that sort of popular culture. I don't know how fulfilling it is ultimately. And yeah, works for a lot of people, I'm sure. Oh. Got to go. Yep, cheers, Chuck. Take it easy, mate. Yeah, smooth surfaces despite still the crudeness, right. It's it's a it's a interesting underneath here. It doesn't there's nothing quite as precise as what's under the the Mastaba. I mean, I don't know what they were doing there, if they were stapling the rock. In fact, let me look at that. That was what the hell was that? clear shot see if we get a clear shot of this huh it looks like something that's been done um, let's say more recently whoops whoops it's a bunch of it There's actually some interesting, um, almost like rusted iron that's been melted into into some stone blocks at uh, Hawara. And I can briefly show that too, but there's some real interesting... And th not only there, but at Giza, there's almost like some metal that's been melted into stone. It's like, yeah, people that want to... Like the CME theory or the supernova theory, there is some some good evidence to support that something like that happened. There's really weird effects into stone in a number of different places. In fact, I'll try and find that in a minute once we get through this, but because this is really interesting in its own. So yeah, you t tunnels down into a room and then we go up into what is the 
I guess, the main chamber. The one thing that I need to do on this footage, I have, there's a three and a half gig video file, it's probably about seven or eight, nine minutes, that I can't render, that it got corrupted. So I need to, there's, I know there's a bunch of tools that can be used to recover footage from that. And I think it's mostly of the, an examination of the room at the end here and uh, the trip back out, but I will eventually fix that. And change the full. Put 100%. Wow. Yeah, over here. Oh, you mean in on uh, on my window? Yeah, I'm, I. You want it to be full screen? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, that's a whole other scene in OBS. I can't do that right now. I'm just gonna leave the video window where it is. So yeah, kind of a merge up into this corbelled ceiling chamber, and there's I mean, there's wood in this. So that's the interesting about this pyramid. There's a lot of this like cedar from Lebanon and sort of 2,000 year old chunks of wood that are actually embedded into the uh, the masonry here. So I, d I don't know. It's hard to tell if this is what period this really is from a just a technical perspective on the on the on the architecture. I mean, it's a real mystery. Yeah, rough construction. Cheers, Tommy. Oh, you meant to zoom. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Some of the masonry looks pretty precise. It's almost as if the surfaces on the outside have just been smashed and worked over. But there's some of the, the wood that's been put up into the roof of the ceiling. So I think this might be like the corbel ceiling thing here, like the red pyramid. It's not quite like the red pyramid, yeah. I have all, the, I, that's another pyramid that I'd like to get into and, and do a detailed walkthrough because I've I've been in all, all through there and with these cameras and... Yes. So there's another shaft that leads off that way. Ah, uh, the Russians channel for the stuff that, um... What's the Russians channel? It's in my one of the playlists on my site. I think stuff I'm watching. There's a, the, the, I think the most recent video in there is uh, their look into the Bent Pyramid. They, they're actually pretty popular, big channel for the Russian audience, I guess. And uh, but they've, I haven't watched much, much more of the other stuff. But they seem to, I recognise a couple of those guys actually from other things. But I think they do really good work. La, are you? Sounds like it. Some more wood. And almost like a, a, a crude, almost corbelled ceiling, but still. It's hard to tell if it once was precise and then it's been hammered. That step in the wall is the same one, two, three split you see in Peru take off. Hmm. Thanks, Nassim. So yeah, nice little chamber. I mean, it's always great to get to go into any of these places. I think that's it for this footage. Yeah. So now I'm, there's a couple of videos that I'm <coughs> I'm missing at the end of here, but I think this um, we were looking at this structure, which I'm pretty sure is at Hawara. Uh, actually, if I look at Hawara real quick, I just want to show a quick footage of the rusted rusted iron. Pigmo iron lines, that looks like it. Let's see here. Yeah, here we go. Just find this. 
That's an interesting block there, wasn't it? Iron patch, iron wall patch. Let me find it. Always fun. Huh. Alright, let me just try the start of this. Then we'll give up. Where are you, Mo? Where's the iron patch in the wall? This is the, the bit of wall that has the um, iron in it. If I can find it. And this is at nearby Hawara. But I just wanted to briefly share this if I can. Play some more music. Oh, no. Sorry for the... Uh, oh, there we go. Real interesting. I don't know what this is. I mean, it could be. I mean, you're still talking about thousands and thousands of years. So. It's real interesting, though, to see this sort of stuff. Like, I mean, this, the, 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 the core work, I mean, whatever this is, the bedrock work seems like it's contemporary. But this. You do see a few little pieces of this sort of stuff around. Like your angle in the resonance video. Got some good information there. Good quality. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Something. Anyway, so there's more of that to come, and I, I will I will do some more of that. But let's have a look here. All right. So that was. I hope you enjoyed that as a look through my doom. I thought what maybe the uh, something else I could briefly do real quick is to. I have a few articles here that is interesting. One one is a link that I wanted to share. To say that's worth looking at, which is this uh, website, Keith Hamilton. It's keithhamilton.academia.edu. This guy does incredibly good work, um, just astonishing, actually. And he he has publishes basically papers on many of these sites: Hawara Pyramid, uh, Assyrian, and and a lot of it. He does 3D modeling in his papers, and he takes a sort of a detailed look at a lot of them. And and if you look at like Mastaba 17, that's where we were earlier uh, in the video so you can clearly see the passageway we're in here the alcove there's the megalithic box and he does some and this is a 60 page pdf of you know heaps of details about this so if anyone's interested in researching a bit more about a lot of these sites i can i'd recommend checking out this site just just from a uh it's just just a, if you want that download of information this is this guy does uh, incredible work i've not met him i don't know him i just I've been sent his his web page a couple times, and I just I find his work very very valuable. So, a couple other things to to mention, just in terms of other history news and stories, I thought some of this might be worth looking at for people that are interested in all of these topics. And I I cross over a lot of the not just megalithic stuff, but I'm as you know interested in younger Dryas and the theory of human origins as well as species timeline. So, interesting interestingly enough. We, we're now back way further than 40,000 years ago uh, in Australia and 50,000 years ago. We're now placing original human occupation of Australia at 120,000 years ago, which is three times what it was before. And they've basically found some shell middens. Uh, I think, where is this? In uh, south, far south coast of Victoria, so the southern, the bight, if you like, on uh, of Australia at the bottom. This is where they've dug these up. These are shell middens, so... Uh, shell middens being the discarded people made structures out of discarded shellfish remains from food and that this shell middens are found all over the world in a lot of different a lot of, a lot of different places but one thing i wanted to highlight here that's really interesting is that thermal luminescence dated dating techniques were used on the blackened stones so this is the new technique i know brian mentioned in one of our interviews but there's a new other than carbon dating there's a thing called th thermal luminescence and i believe martin um sweatman talked a little bit about it in our podcast but this is a, a whole new technique that kind of looks at how long surfaces of stone have been exposed to to sunlight and can, we can kind of roughly date them i mean i think it's plus or minus a, a couple thousand years we'll see so 100 to 130,000 years so i guess the the window is at least around 30,000 years there but still anywhere in that 100 to 130,000 years ago i mean that's 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 again things are just getting older right and where were how does this how does people that civilization or, or ancient you know primitive cultures even that that were that were doing these shell middens is evidence of human occupation 
was it humans was it other species of people that's a that's a good question too but how does this fit into the orthodox story of out of africa and whatnot i mean it's just it's just stuff keeps getting older in that respect and you know from a, another point that i thought fits into this which is another interesting little story which is they found another massive massive underground city in the cappadocia region some of you may have seen some of this but a bunch of flooding essentially has led to the discovery of what they think is a 5000 year old underground city now this is a region that is rife with underground cities uh you know Darren Kuyu, a bunch of other um yeah Kalima Kalima by the way my pronunciation is horrible of these sites and but I'd like to just on the record say go Beckley Tepe I promise I'll get better at that not go Blecky Tepe which is how I say it and that so many people get upset about <laughs> This is something that enough people have told me how to print that I'm doing that wrong that they could form a choir and sing it back to me in the right pronunciation. There's, so I go Beck Lee Tepe. I'm amazed I can form a sentence some days. However, this is really interesting because, as you might know, some of these underground cities in Turkey are massive, like 200,000 people. And this is a whole new one that they have found that is. 1.2 million square meters. Those who have been in there say in the past it is some 600 meters by two kilometers in size. I there was you know it's the theory that there, humanity had to go underground to escape something. I mean you don't do this for any other reason. Live in a somewhere else. Yes, like I mean. You just take so much effort to do, and it's such and and for such a large span of space, and and to and one of the theories that they say is, oh, they did that for defense to to defend against like other people attacking them. I'm like, really? You would flood them out, like starve them out. I mean, how do you? And I know they had supply tunnels. There's tunnels that go for hundreds of kilometers to other cities. Apparently, there's almost like a, a subterranean world in Turkey that we're just finding more and more about. And it's just well, this is I I love this. I, th I think it's um. A great new article and just stuff gets the, the picture just gets more and more complex uh when we go back and i'm not sure how it's dated to seven thousand years old it's going to be diff i mean you could date it for potentially longer right uh, go beckley tepe in the same area is at least ten thousand years old fallout shelters right is the 200k number confirmed i've just heard that said about that that's how many people uh darren qu could house was two hundred thousand. there's something on your chin lol yeah i know I'm not sure what it is either. It just happens to grow there. So I, I'm just naturally lazy. I, I don't like to shave. So that's what it is. And I look stupid with the top part. So I, A long time ago, I gave up caring much about what I look like. <laughs> Another article. Chinese researchers have discovered 300,000-year-old 300, 300, ancient human fossils. So this was the date that reset humanity from 190,000 years ago about 300,000 years ago was the find in Morocco however this has now been published I think in the uh, in the National Journal of Science or something this this post but they have found a whole bunch of human remains that date back to around 300,000 years ago again in China and I'm not sure where this fits in that orthodox story of humans coming out of the um, out of the Stone Age and the rise of us as, as we understand it as a species. So, so based on uh, testing results, that's 16 individuals. So we've been determined that 275 to 331,000 years ago. So mid to late Pleistocene period. What's interesting is it says that that these these hint at modern. It's a, they call them human, but it's I'm I'm not actually sure if they're claiming the same as modern human. But when you start saying it's human and it's sort of looks like modern humans I'm, I, I'm not sure where the distinction really lays however what i think is interesting there was something interesting in this graph where was the graph actually i think it might have been this actually the aboriginal find this graph here i thought was worth mentioning briefly which is something i like to point out four dislikes i'm sure there's some dislikes i always get them that's fine people can do what they want i don't understand why people go to the take the time to dislike stuff I don't have time to hate on stuff like that um, but this I thought this graph is particularly telling so this is the past 150,000 years 
and looking at essentially global temperatures, right? It's just warm and cold. And you've got obviously the younger dry, so you can see the little 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 blip. Um, what's that noise? Uh, but you go back. I mean, we again. It's forty. Where did civilization start? Way over here, like after all this stuff and the nice warm period. But now we're talking about going back. And once you go back far enough, stuff gets warm again. And what? How do we deal with warm conditions? We love it, right? We 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 do really well in warm conditions. So when the human timeline suddenly jumped from. 100,000 to 300,000 years ago, you're now talking about other, you know, glacial minimum periods, like warm weather, like nice warm weather for hundreds of thousands of years probably at times. There's still this up and down that seems to be like a very interesting trend. Like the, the, the degrees of temperature swings seem so much more dramatic than what we experience today. But when you go back and you, you I just, I, there's a strong correlation between warm weather and human progress. I mean, the, the, the the bubonic plague in the dark ages was is also correlated to an actual cold period it's called i think the little ice age or something like that but there was a cold period i mean we food doesn't grow as well when it's colder it's not it's not we tend to not do as well when the warmer it gets the better we go uh, as a species and renaissance corresponds with a with a with a warmer period um, there's a lot to that theory and i think that if you give us humans warm conditions and food to eat I mean, it, it's a pretty p simple path. We we, we we are the only species that really builds on this on the 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 work of our ancestors. You know, we stand on the shoulders of everybody who came before. If you, you if your if your father in a in your in a primitive situation, your dad spent his lifetime learning how to do build huts and make spears. He's going to teach that to you in the first few years. You're going to know how to do that, and you can spend your lifetime learning how to hunt properly, do something else, and that becomes a consolidated stack of knowledge and that's that's how we function today still and give us warm weather we go places we 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 advance it's always been a difficult pill for me to swallow the idea that even if we if we've only been here for 300,000 years why is it in the last 6,000 years that that's when civilization started what what in the world were we doing before that it's humans are humans you know we we we're smart that's what we that's what we're supposed to do right we're not the strongest we're not anything else we we have a lot of interesting characteristics. We're like the only species that pretty much dies from exposure, unless it's a, like a mole or something. But we die from exposure if you leave us out in the sun. We're not really developed very well for the planet. We we can't, uh, you know, our eyes can't take looking at the sun directly. We need sunglasses. We, we're weak relative to all the other primates, all that sort of stuff. Alan Wilbur, one dollar. Thank you very much for the super chat, Alan Wilbur. I appreciate that a great deal. But anyhow... Curious, from your accent, are you from Australia? Indeed I am, Nunya. I am Australian. I have been living over here in the States for 13 years and a couple of years before that in Singapore. So accent is slightly muddled now. <laughs> You'd be away. That's because, because that's when God created the earth. Thank you for that trolling comment, my good friend. You'd be away. <laughs> uh, in any case, so I... I I hope you enjoyed that. I know we've been going for a little while right now, but I thought that would... If you think the live streams are a good idea, if you like me doing this stuff, please let me know. I, uh, I enjoy doing them, and I think it's a... I, and I'm going to be... You know, I do a lot of the sort of raw footage watching on sites as well, and I can... I think it's fun to talk about some of the, um, the articles and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoy that, let me know. And I will continue to do these, and hopefully I can also we'll get Chuck and some other guys. We can do some more live stream, uh, just just chats. I think that would be fun, and people can participate in that. And I really do appreciate all the the uh, the chat participation. I'm sorry if I didn't get to read all of it. I'll get better at this as I go forward. Do more live, thanks, man. Yeah, I'll do that. What was that Keith guy's name again? He's in there. I think you can scroll up. Ben is from Easter Island. Can't you tell by the accent? I wish. Yeah, that's another place I want to get to, but. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. So thanks very much. And I will do some more of this. And reach, you can get me on the websites, unchartedx.com, all the Twitters and social medias. I do uh, try and catch up with as much of that as I can. But until the next time, I will, uh, I will see you all later. Have a good day. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Cheers. Thanks, Ryan. Cheers. Thanks for that quick super chat.
Cheers, guys. Peace out.